Uh, we're just waiting on a license plate guy right now to to call in. So, all right, and uh, no and, then we'll, and then we'll go from there. Okay. So, before before we uh before we get on, man, how how did you get into football, man? You know, and how did you you know th- know that you wanted to play? Well, um, I had an older brother who was a pretty good football player that um, passed away trying to live out his dream of being a professional athlete, a professional football player. And uh, his dream and his goals became my dreamy goals. So I just... Hello? Hello. Hello, Joe? Yes, sir. Hey, Joe, what's going on? It's Will from uh, On The Board Sports here. How's it going? What's up, Will? Everything is good, my friend. Thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for coming on. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, We actually just had on uh, OJ. Uh, I was actually just talking to him, so you guys are going to be talking together in sync, everything like that. So, Will. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Um, we need to, um, uh, I need to, actually, I have to call both of them for this to work, so uh, I need to reach out to, do you have that, uh, the other guy's number again? Yes, I do. Uh, can you let me know what that is? Sure. Uh, give me, yeah. Joe, give me one second, all right? Yeah, no doubt. Should I hang up? Uh, no, 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 stay on. Stay on. Let me, let, let my uh, producer uh, call back OJ, all right? You got it. All right. Give me one second. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, OJ. Sorry about that. I got Joe Joe Ruback, license plate guy on the other on the other line over here. So, guys, say hello. Say okay. what's up. Otis. What's up, Joe? You ready for this, man? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you have so much ammo yourself. You got plenty to retort. So you're fine. Yeah, I believe I have. <laughs> it's going to be a good time, man. How's everything going with you? Good? Good, yeah. I can't complain, yeah. All right, no doubt. Cool. Um, all right, cool. We're going to do the intro. We'll do 10 seconds of silence, and I'll play the intro. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you for coming on again. And like I said, once you hear the theme music, I'll, I'll lead you guys in, and we'll go from there. All right. Sounds good. Awesome. You know you gotta do this tour, OJ. And welcome back to another edition of On The Board Sports. I am your host, Will Trucci, a.k.a. Will C, coming to you from Gotham Podcast Studios in Manhattan, New York. And I'm joined by the wonderful Mike Ortiz, our wonderful producer here at Gotham Control and the Ones and Twos. And we have two very special guests joining us for this edition of the On the Board Sports podcast. And I'm talking about, first, the one and only Joe Ruback, a.k.a. License Plate Guy, famous Giants fan, and former New York Giants running back and Super Bowl 25 MVP Otis Anderson. Gentlemen, how are you? Hello? Mike?
It's probably going to be in trouble in the end. Yeah, it's, it, it, it should be interesting. Oh, absolutely. Guys, uh, sorry for the technical difficulty here on our end. Uh, sorry about that, guys. Do you want to start that one more time? Sure, we'll do it again. We'll add the time, so don't worry about it. Sorry. Give me two seconds of silence. I, I see what the problem was. We're good now. All right. So we'll start it up over again, and you know we'll go we'll go from there. All right, guys. Sorry about that. Sure. And welcome back to another edition of On The Board Sports. I am your host, Will Trucci, a.k.a. Will C., coming to you from Gotham Podcast Studios in Manhattan, New York. And I'm joined by the wonderful Mike Ortiz, a wonderful producer here at Gotham, controlling the ones and twos behind the glass here. And I'm joined by two very, very special guests. Joining us via the phone are Joe Ruback, a.k.a. License Plate Guy, famous Giants fan. You've probably seen him all over at MetLife Stadium. And former New York Giants running back and Super Bowl 25 MVP, Otis Anderson. Gentlemen, how are you today? Uh, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing very well. What about you, Joe? How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing a lot better than you. You're the one that's about to get roasted soon, so I'm doing just fine. <laughs> hey, look, I, hey, listen to this, man. Just remember, I get the last say. Whatever they say about me, I have a rebuttal. <laughs> you know what? You know what that... I don't, what are these roasts about? That's not fair that the guy that gets beat up has got a chance to retort at the end. We're going to have to change this up a little bit, but I don't like that. Gentlemen, gentlemen, you guys are leading on right now. December 11th, next week, <laughs> you, Otis is going to get roasted over at Gotham Comedy Club at 7 p.m. Uh, how are you, know, you know, what, what, how, how did this ever come about? You know, a legend in OJ in Otis Anderson getting roasted. I mean, this is kind of unbelievable. Guys, you guys want to take me, uh, uh, you know, make me uh, see what's going on here? Talk to me. Go ahead. Well, take it away. I, I need to get started. God, I'm, I'm scared to try to tell you how I got started. Um, we were just talking about roast, my business partner, Mark Goldberg, and uh, and he thought it would be a good idea. He said, you know what, man? You've been doing a lot in the community. Also, um, you know, you've been been looking at an opportunity when they get in the Hall of Fame and you want to stay relevant. And I'm going, like, well, this ain't one way to be relevant. I mean, I mean, that's a lot of ways to be relevant than to be roasted. But, but uh, just, just, just looking at opportunities and it was a fun thing. You know, I got fun people that are going to roast me and I don't, I don't think I have any dirt, but it's going to be interesting to find out what do I have that they know that I don't know. You know, it's funny you say that, Otis, because, you know, most people, or I should say athletes or former athletes, you know, they'll come through with uh, some kind of uh, uh, charity game, whether it be softball, which, you know, I run one, or, or, you know, a ping pong, a bowling event, something. You know, this thing is pretty cool, and uh, hats off to you, because you certainly certainly have to be some kind of you know, secure to a, to take all this abuse. Again, like you said, whether it's mean, not mean, whatever dirt they have, you literally have to be one of a kind person. So I, I got to tell you, I'm really happy that you're doing it. I'm very happy to be involved in it, and um, I'm excited about this night. Otis, how did you? Well, I, I, go ahead, go ahead, guys. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I, know, I was going to say, um, you know, Joe, I, I appreciate it, but. Like you said before, uh, why and how and why are still two questions I'm still looking at. <laughs> Guys, I, I got two questions for you, and they're, they're both kind of sort of similar. For Joe, how did, how did you become a Giants fan, number one? And for Otis, how did you get into professional football and wanting to be a football player? Well, you know, you know I'll, I'll start with that. I'll start with that, Otis, because – it's funny to ask to get asked that question um, with having Otis Anderson on the other line because let's face it, you know, first of all, Giant fans are bred into their family. 
If your dad or grandfather, I don't care, somebody in your family is a Giant fan, you had no choice but to be a Giant fan. And when I was younger, one of my favorite players happens to be the guy on the other end. And look what he did. He captivated the New York area. He won a Super Bowl. He dropped a hammer on the Bills and he won the MVP. And all of a sudden, you know, more Giant fans were born. And it, it, it happens because of a winning team. And he was a big part of that. So it's very easy. You know, you're, you're a Giants fan because of your family. You stay Giants fan because of their winning ways. Let's not talk about right now. And, uh, <laughs> and then, obviously, it culminates to becoming friends. That's really good, Joe. Um, I can't say I would inherit to being a Giants fan. I would actually trade it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually hated the Giants, to be honest with you. Because I, I played against them twice a year, and being a Cardinal, you, you didn't like your opponent, so that made it very easy to dislike the Giants. Um, you know, I had an older brother that was a, 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 a player who played high school and college football, and it's, it's a, his aspiration was to be a professional football player, and, and on his way, he was, you know, injured and later passed and never got a chance to live out that dream, but then I took the baton that he was uh, trying to trying to uh, pass and and I accept the pass and I ran with it and uh, became everything he wanted to become. So I lived my my career was through my brother. What he what he had kept it to do. Wow, that's that's pretty amazing right there, man. Living living one's dream right there, and you and you did it, and you won met, you won a Super Bowl MVP on top of that, playing in one of the greatest markets, doing that and getting your name out there, Otis. Uh, guys, I know next week is coming up. I know you guys mentioned it, but Otis, how hyped are you? Or how how much do you see this, you know, coming to fruition, you know, as far as this whole roast goes, number one, and you getting to see a lot of your former teammates there next week. Uh, how, how, how is that for you, getting to see a lot of people that you probably haven't seen in a while? Well, you know, I'm here for a time, so I get a chance to see the you know, the um, guys that are locally, but when you have a guy like Lawrence Taylor who's going to be in town, but, you know, Carl Banks, I will cross, I see him every week at the Giant game, and having guys like Oakley, who's a friend, and he and I are doing some business things together, Larry Holmes and I are trying to create some business opportunity together. Uh, Jerry Cooney, we support each other through our charity endeavors, and, and then just, just having... Um, other friends and friends who have followed me and supported me in other matters uh, show up to, to hear and see what what my friends have to say about me. I, I think that's why a lot of people are coming just to see what my friends have to say because a lot of guys I hang out with they know they see me they know who I am but I think for those who don't know that that's why they're coming they they can't wait to see what a Guy like a Carl Banks or a Howard Cross or Lawrence or Jerry Cooney, Larry Holmes, what can they possibly have to say about me? Which I'd like to know myself. <laughs> and it's going to be a night of laughs, especially. And Joe, I know you're you're the diehard Giants fan out of out of everybody. You're you're the unofficial number one fan. Uh, I'm sure you're probably going to have a couple of uh, couple of nice zingers right there for for Otis somewhat, no? In a sense, I don't know. I, it's so hard. Am I going to sit there and and roast the guy that I'm the, one of the biggest fans of in the world? It's going to be really tough. Uh, you know, it's funny jumping on what Otis just said in regards to all of his friendships and people coming out to see him on on such a cool night at his roast. You know, if you really think about it, in the end it's because of the relationships that he, that he has formed that these guys are coming through. Look, I was supposed to be away, but, uh, you know, I changed my, my plans because this is something that's important to Otis, and I will forever support anything that Otis gets involved in. If I happen to <clears throat> upset him a little bit that night with some, uh, you know, curveballs at him, oh, well, it's all in good fun. Absolutely, and, and, and that's what's good about it. It will be good fun, and I got a strong back. And we already know that from from what I used to do. So, 
Um, <laughs> I, I say fly away, enjoy yourself, and say whatever you got to say. And just remember, I get the last word. That's how I look at it. Otis, throughout your playing career, okay, you you went you played with the St. Louis Cardinals, who are now the Arizona Cardinals. And like I said, you you mentioned that you know you played in and you were a giant, and you're mostly remembered as being a giant. Uh, but what what have been some of your more fonder memories playing here in New York? Well, I wanted to see one guy who was so uh, ecstatic about being a giant dress himself up in license plate. I never thought that was real. Really, 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 until, until I saw this guy. <laughs> I'm like, what kind of what kind of jerk walks around with every license plate you can imagine in your world and say giant? You know, but there he is. <laughs> and, and, uh, just, just, Playing with some real, real great football uh, teammates, but you know the Harry Cox and George Martin, you know, have an opportunity to be in their presence and and understand what it's like to be a professional when you think of George Martin. Because everybody can be a pro, but how many can be professionals? And George Martin is one of the all-time greatest professionals I met in my life. So it's it just been an overall, overall great opportunity, and I met a lot of so current. To make friends who I met being a giant, but I have a lot of friends that were close and dear to me that was Cardinal, like Roy Green, Dildis Brown, you know, Curtis Greer, Leonard Smith. So the relationship list goes on and on and on, and I'm just happy that I was able to have what they call two careers, seven years with the Cardinals and seven years with the Giants, and, and have an opportunity to play in two Super Bowls and and make a prediction and see it come true. Coming out of Miami in 79, I said if I played in the Super Bowl, state of Florida, feature running back, I win MVP. And I did it. So, how about that? So, you know, everything I wanted to accomplish, I have done. Um, the only thing I'm waiting on now is a Hall of Fame. I don't know why, I don't understand why, but maybe one day that'll happen too. Maybe one day indeed, you know. You never know what might happen in, in this world. A lot of a lot of names, especially with the uh, NFL turning a hundred this year, guys. I know there's been a lot of history with the Giants and everything like that going on. But as far as the, just to correlate to this Giant season right now, it's been very, very, very ugly for the Giants. I'm a Jet fan, and I well, I know happened. I know I know what's bad, you know. But with that wow. said, it's uh. It's not good. It's not good for New York, but for the future, for them, for the Giants, especially for the Giants, how must they approach the offseason and them trying to finish out the year? No, this is that you? Hello? Yeah, hey, listen, I'll, I'll take that one. Uh, Go ahead. Finishing out the year, I mean, look, uh, with the news that broke today, that um, Eli will be taking over for Daniel Jones, who has the high ankle sprain. Um, you know, you could look at this in so many different ways. Uh, does Eli give you a better chance to win? And so is that what you want? Are you chasing after Ohio State's Chase Young? Um, is Daniel Jones going to be shut down for the rest of the year? Is this back to Eli's team just for this year, and it's a four-game farewell tour? So there's so many different avenues to explore um, if you're a Giants fan. Uh, I don't really know which way they're going to turn. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll just have to take it game by game. And, you know, this I'll be sitting in the crowd no matter what. I'm looking forward, actually, to, uh, to going to Philly this Monday night. I'm looking forward to seeing – Eli play again. Um, I am a, I book, I've become a big Daniel Jones fan, um, but I'm a huge Eli fan. So I get the best of both worlds right now. Unfortunately, none of those worlds include a winning football team for you or for, for myself. So, you know, New York football in a whole is terrible right now. And, uh, some things got to change, but, uh, you know, we take it, we take it week by week and see what happens. Absolutely, and you know, Otis, are you on? Are you? All right. Did we lose Otis. I don't know. To I, I don't know to be honest so, with so you. So this is what this is what he does. He comes on, 
and he just he thinks like at the roast well I'm not gonna bring up that he hung up the phone. I'm gonna kill him for this. Oh just... god. <laughs> All good. Joe, I gotta since you're on the line right now, I know you just mentioned with the Giants and who who is uh, outside of Otis outside of Otis Anderson, who is one of your favorite Giants growing up? I mean, look, uh, that whole twenty one you know, Super Bowl 21 team, even 25, but go back to 21. You know, I started, uh, you know, with my dad really young. I mean, he brought me into the Giants world going to games when, uh, you know, preteen. So, um, you know, I used to, I remember I used to babysit for Joe Morris's kids, his two daughters, and I was 16. So, um, you know, I go back to those, those days, uh, uh, Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson and, you know, Otis just brought up a, an incredible man in George Horton. Um, so I look, I look at those teams as my original teams. I guess if you look at license plate guy, you'd be like uh, probably more well known for the last two Super Bowls than the first two Super Bowls. Just like Otis will be remembered for winning the two Super Bowls in New York, but not all the yards gained in uh, you know in St. Louis. So. Um, uh, I would say that all the Super Bowl teams are by far my my favorite bunch of guys. That's a given because you know you from preseason all the way through to the Super Bowl. How about your your favorite Giant right now? I know Danny Jones, Danny Dimes, Eli Manning, and Saquon Barkley are up on your list probably. But who would be who would probably be that your favorite Giant right now? Well, that's that's funny you say that. I mean, look. Uh, uh, it's funny that these questions get asked about favorite uh, players on the team. Don't you remember a time where there was no free agency and when you went out and you bought a jersey of your favorite player, you could wear that jersey for 10 years? Yeah. You know, that doesn't exist anymore. You're, you're lucky if you get through a rookie con with the same jersey. So, uh, you know, I stick to favorite team, obviously Giants. But, of course, I mean, how could you not love – uh, Saquon Barkley. He has to be everybody's favorite player. He conducts himself like a true professional. Um, he takes after, you know, the great Barry Sanders. He flips the ball to the, to the ref. I mean, he's just, he's just an incredible young man with incredible talent. So he's probably my favorite giant as of, uh, as of right now. But, you know, sprinkle in everybody else from, you know, Daniel Jones to Shep. You know, sprinkle these guys around and, uh, you know, you really root for the team, not the player. You know, listen, I was at, I know you were at the Jet Giant game a couple weeks ago where the Jets won by, by a touchdown. I was there. Yeah, I don't recall that, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I was there for that game, too. I'm a, I'm a diehard Jet fan. If you probably scroll on my Instagram, you'll probably see me in my Jet suit and everything like that. But that's whether here nor there. Uh, you know, with, with the other side of the coin here in New York football right now, Joe, uh, you know, you look at everything that's gone on with both the Jets and the Giants. How far do you see New York football getting re- really good again at at this point in time? Man, that's a that's a that's a billion dollar question. I mean, I thought you guys had it figured out a few weeks ago, right? Donald came back; he was on a win streak. Then you guys fumbled that up, so. The Giants, Giants haven't been relevant for years. If anything, you know, uh, they should have they should have blew it up a couple of years ago. Instead, now we're in trying to win now mode. Well, not this year, but trying to win now mode and and starting over and rebuilding. I don't know, man. That's that's really the billion dollar question. Who's got a better quarterback? Is it Donald? Is it Jones? Is it both? Uh, you know, will they battle it out like? You remember we used to have these arguments, uh, Eli Manning and, uh, and, and, and Sanchez. Right. You know what I mean? So, right. so I don't really know. I, I, don't, I don't go at it with Jet fans because you guys aren't even in our division. Yeah, we share a stadium when we play each other once at a blue moon. But you know what? I don't, I don't dislike them winning every now and then. Do I want them to have a better record than the Giants? Of course not. You know, no, no New York fan wants that. Um, but to be honest with you, I, I, I really don't know who's got the fast track and these days with free agency and, and salary caps, 
trying to keep your players and trying to keep them happy is insane. It is. I don't know how Bill Belichick does it, to be honest with you. The guy is a machine. You know, I'll answer your question like this. Who's going to have a better record or who's got a, a fast track to the winning side? The first New York team to get Belichick back here. You know, that's a very interesting thing because all, all through the offseason and even a couple of weeks ago when there was all this Patriot talk with uh, Tom Brady and if he might leave or Belichick might leave, you know, who knows? Who knows what might happen with, with all that stuff going on? And especially now with everybody on ESPN and on all the talk show stations now, you get to see it, Joe. It's just absolutely unbelievable what's gone on. You know, it, it really has been uh, a, ca- a case of, oh, the Patriots had this great number one defense. Well, they went up the first six weeks of the season against some some pretty poor teams, especially the Jets for the first, you know, six weeks of the season, you know, twice. And, and now it's crazy. It's crazy how people have the short mindset of, oh, you know, the Patriots are going to go down. They're going to. At some point in time, yeah, they got to go down, but you can't count them out because because of the machine that is Bill Belichick and Tom Brady. As much as I hate to say that, year in and year out, you know, it, it's it's crazy. You're not you're not wrong. And I, I'll t- let me tell you something. I I'm buying into I'm buying into the fact, obviously, because I would love him back in blue. But I'm buying into the fact that maybe Brady hangs it up or goes somewhere else, and and Belichick decides that he does want to come back and finish business in New York and does want to lead them to uh, to a Super Bowl and win it here in New York. I, I believe that he has always wanted that, um, and I believe one day he's going to get that. Wow. So you really think he's going to come back here? I believe in everything that I've heard. I've chatted with, uh, with Belichick numerous times. Obviously, he would never tell me right. that type of info, but, but I've, I've from people around him, uh, even from the two bills, the 30-30s, whatever that was that we watched, you could, he's, you could tell, man, you could tell he's got a, he's got a fire to coach in New York and for the Giants. And, uh, you know, eventually that, uh, that might happen. Who knows when? Maybe the, uh, when, when you and I have our kids that are, that are rooting for the teams. I don't see him giving up football until he's 90. But, uh, it's going to happen. Who knows when? Who knows? You know, I mean, he had his opportunity with the Jets, and he only stayed here for 24 hours. And then we know the rest is history after that, you know? so That's correct. So, I, again, there, there's really not much you could say there. But with everything gone on in New York with football and up in New England, you, you've been to a lot of Giants games your whole your whole life, Okay. Who has been the like best player that you ever got to see in person? Uh, Lawrence Taylor. Uh, I am that old. Uh, I did get to watch him play um, in front of my eyes. I did get to see Lawrence Taylor change the game of football. I did see uh, teams drafting offensive linemen because of him. That wasn't a thing. You know, Lawrence Taylor comes around and you're changing your game plan. You're changing where you're running the ball. You're changing who you're drafting. Um, hands down, Lawrence Taylor was probably the greatest. I don't even think arguably, but obviously you'd have to say arguably because of all the fans out there, different fan bases. But Lawrence Taylor changed the game, you know, and uh, I got to see Phil Sims and I got to see Eli Manning, you know, and all yeah. these great players. And, and, and uh, you know, there are some – ridiculously wonderful players that have gone through um, the Giants organization. I mean, come on, man, five Super Bowls. They won four Super Bowls. And you know what? You, you take those players, and I'm not saying that there were some magical Hall of Famers on there. There are some. But together as a team, as a 53-man roster with, with uh, Parcells and then with, with Coughlin, you know, it's some great players that have gone through here. No one doesn't get enough credit. Uh, probably because of the because of the way he spoke afterwards, but Tiki Barber, Tiki Barber was a ridiculously great running back to watch. You know, he really was. He took over games that the Giants should have lost. Two hundred yards here, two hundred yards there. Mm-hmm. After Coughlin fixed his fumbling problems, 
So, you know, you look at guys like that, Amani Toomer, always getting the job done. Brandon Jacobs, running people over. I mean, there are some great, great players that have come through here. Bradshaw, too, you know. At Incredible. My Bradshaw, yeah. Earth, wind, and fire? Yep. Gee, please. Absolutely. And, you know, you look at it, it's almost like it – with the Giants, get back to the Giants and the Jets here for a second. It's almost like it's almost a, a mirror, a mirroring thing, right? For example, the Giants in the '80s when they had Lawrence Taylor and Carl Banks, the Jets had the sack exchange with Gastineau and Klecko and Marty Lyons and Salam and everybody like that. You know, the problem was with the Jets, they just couldn't oh, get through the big game. Say, did you say Abdul Salam? Yeah, I remember that guy too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yep, I I meant I, I'm listen. I'm not even. I wasn't even alive for the sack exchange or for for the first Giants Super Bowl. I, I'm going to be 30 years old next October. Okay, gotcha. so I I just remember hearing all the stories about and watching some old highlights with Gastineau and Klecko and Lions and Salam and everybody like that. So it's just it, you know to to get to hear it from you. It just makes it add on because you you've lived it you've got to see it you know and especially seeing a guy like tiki barber having a guy like tiki barber here for you know the amount of time that he was in new york and then you had curtis martin here after he signed with with the jets from the patriots you know that's some pretty pretty good football that's some pretty good new york football right there you know pretty good football but, and you know, and you know what? Pat, I gotta. You know what? How about the man that we're talking about tonight? You know, I hated Otis Anderson. I hated him. Him and Stump Mitchell would come into New York and run all over the Giants. Granted, the Cardinals stunk. They Neil Lomax used to bring his team in here, and we crushed the Cardinals. But he ran all over them. When the Giants got him, loved him. It's just so funny how fandom works. If he's on, he's not on the team. You hate him. Once he comes to your team, we love him. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's that would be like that if Tom Brady played for the Jets, you know, or some that's somebody that you hate. Correct. It would be somebody that you hate. You know, you love to hate the guy. Yeah, that is that is absolutely correct. That's a perfect example. Someone that uh, a nemesis, they, could, they would crush you when they were on the other team. Now they're on your team, and you can't wait to to cheer them on. That's awesome, man. Joe, I know you like I said, you're a big fan with with Big Blue and every and everything like that, but outside of your fandom, what do you do outside of outside of all this? <laughs> you mean do I actually have a job? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually an excuse me. I'm actually I'm, I'm an athletic director of a high school in uh in the Bronx. And um it's an eight fifty three school, so you know, we have uh uh you know, learning disabled behavioral issues and um you know it's it's actually my calling i have been doing it for 16 years i absolutely love it and i think the greatest part about it is the kids that i work with they don't even care about license play guy they just want they just want joe ruback the gym teacher joe ruback the cool guy they don't care one bit about the license plate and that's cool because it allows me to have this this pseudo celebrity type of you know, social media and what I do on the weekends with the Giants and then go back into my real world. That's that's amazing right there. You get this you get to be with the future of America each and every day. You know? You yes, can't sir. you can't make that up. You can't make that up. That's awesome that you give back like that too. You know, for 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 the youth and everything like that. And especially you, that, that that's your that's who you are. You know? That's who and, I am. And that that's great that you're doing it in in the in the five boroughs, nonetheless, you know. So no doubt, absolutely, man. Hey, Joe, real quick, real quick here. You know, you're going down to Philadelphia on Monday night. Have you ever been tormented by Eagles fans for doing some of the things that you probably have done? You know, when you whenever the Eagles play the Giants down in uh, Philadelphia. Well, you tell me. Do you remember my jersey? Uh, well, you don't remember my jersey. I don't. So, okay. So, so do I get tormented? First of all, have you seen my hair? Of yes. Of course I'm tormented. Yes. Of course I'm tormented. <laughs> you know, any ammo that you give the Eagle fans, they will take. But, you know, it started, uh, 
you know, this is my 19th year going to every Giant game, home and away. Mm -hmm. But for about 13 of those years, I used to wear this half and half jersey. It was a Giants white front with four Super Bowl patches with a big Lombardi trophy. But the back of the jersey was an Eagles jersey. It was the number zero, and it had Super Bowls written across the back as a name. And I used to wear that for 13 years and literally spent the hell out of the Eagles fans. Now, I sit front row at away games, so if I don't want to turn around to argue, I don't have to. So that's another thing that used to drive them crazy was I just never got into it. I'm not, you know, not going to fight you with your stadium. I'm not going to go back and forth. It's just about being a fan. But I would, I literally would ride them with that jersey like you have no idea. And um, it's funny because, you know, I run this celebrity softball game, and when the Eagles won the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. my jersey became obsolete. <laughs> it became irrelevant. <laughs> and I worked with some Eagle fans, and we actually wound up to raise $10,300 to the Tom Coughlin J Fund. That's awesome. That is awesome right they there. Actually, they actually... They actually bought the jersey. Uh, they wrote the check to the Tom Coughlin J Fund, and then they burned it at the at the link the first game of the season the next year. And they did that all in the parking lot too. Wow, that's that's pretty incredible they, right there. I think that the greatest part about that story is not only the money raised for charity, um, because what was I going to do with the jersey? I wasn't going to hang it up anymore. It didn't exist. Right. Um, the greatest part of that story is we were really trying hard to get over the $10,000 mark. We only had a few days to do it. And the Philadelphia Eagles donated for the Jersey, the Eagles, which I think, you know, is so cool. I don't think the giants would ever do something like that. And, uh, and sure enough, it put us over the 10, 10 grand mark. That's amazing. That's amazing. Joe. Out of all the stadiums that you've been around, what's your favorite one outside of Old Giant Stadium and MetLife? What's been your favorite stadium that you visited? You can't compare anything to Dallas. Dallas is the mecca of stadiums. You could take any stadium in the NFL, pick it up, and put it inside of AT and T. It's 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 got like seven levels. It's fan friendly. It's absolutely gorgeous. That's my favorite place to go. Um, Atlanta was incredible. Their new stadium, very loud, very awesome. The roof was sick. The way it opened and closed. Minnesota, absolutely gorgeous. I look at that stadium like a mini Dallas. Um, and then you got the old schools. You know, you, the Kansas City, Green Bay. I love to go to them. Hopefully, in the beginning of the season, so it's not freezing my butt off. But uh, you know, stadiums in the NFL are are just. I can't wait to go to the one they're building in Vegas. I think that's going to be gorgeous. It is. I really wish MetLife had a dome piece to it. But I'm sure in our lifetime, there'll be another stadium built. Well, for the Jets and the Giants, their lease might be, uh, they might opt out of their lease in 2025, and they might find some new, some new places to play, whether it be, you know, it, I'm just speculating right now. I don't know. But we know that in 2025, they have the opt-out option. Do you see that uh, playing a factor here at all for both these teams wanting to move out, possibly, if that, if that would be? No way. Absolutely not. The only thing I see happen. look, I don't know. In my opinion, maybe one team will go. Maybe the Jets will finally find their own home. I know I say that as a Giant fan. I mean, you could probably say the same thing. But right. I would assume that, that I think the ship has sailed the new city, uh, uh, New York City um, building, uh, whatever that was, it became the rail yards now, whatever it is. Uh, um, Hudson but, Yards. Hudson uh, Yards. Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, rail yards. Like I'm talking, I just trust Irishman, so there you go. So uh, <laughs> I, I would assume that maybe they'll explore their options. Um, to be honest with you, I think, I think PSLs and sharing the stadium killed us. I think we were sold a bag of goods. Um, that you'll never lose money and you have rights to concerts and this and that. And none of that came to fruition. I mean, think about it. If you owned my seat for Jet Games and I owned my seats for Giant Games and they had a concert coming in, who would get those tickets, you or me? It's true. 
It's true. It would- so, so I really believe that we were sold a bag of goods with the PSLs. It was actually the first time in my life I've ever seen a crowd boo Wellington Mara before he passed um, in, in, in 2000. So I don't know. I, I look at stuff like that, and who knows what's going to happen at 25. I, I, I don't think the Giants are going anywhere. If, any, if anybody, it will be the Jets. Interesting. That's very interesting, right there. And I've been thinking about the same thing too with the Jets. They they need their own, they need their own stadium in the worst way. Trying to generate some fans, tired of. And I know with the losing and everything like that. I know you you see it and you you deal with it. But having to deal with all the opposing fans coming in, it's like a seventy to eighty percent ratio of the opposing team at this point in time. With with the way how the you know both the Jets and the Giants have been. And, to- and I'm, I'm not gonna and I'm not gonna tell you that the owners don't see that they must hate it. Right. However, however, deep down inside, do they give a crap? The PSLs are sold. Yep. Doesn't matter if there's four, doesn't matter if there's a couple hundred people there. All the seats are sold. Makes no difference. Yeah. Now look, if I was an owner, I would my ass would still be I would be hot. I definitely don't want to hear "Go Pat Go," which I was listening to all day on Sunday. No, I don't want to hear that. No, nope. but I'm sitting here counting my money because PSLs are sold. Doesn't matter. Right. Right. Hey, hey Joe, you know you hit it right on the head, man. And it's especially especially with the Jets having to deal with the Bill, Bills Mafia. Let's go Buffalo. You know the dog pound coming in in week two and having to deal with all that stuff. And it, it's just ridiculous. I, I'm I'm tired of it. Ridiculous. You know, no doubt. just tired of it, man. Tired of it. Totally agree, Joe. With with the dog pound, and with that being said, do you you don't miss Odell Beckham Jr. Do you? Big time. I miss that dude big time. Really? I miss him for so many things. I miss him. Okay. So, uh, uh, personally, selfishly, I miss him because I went over to his house every other day, if not every day. And we played ping pong for hours. <laughs> okay. We'd go out to dinner. I'd hear stories upon stories about his football, about his college, about before college. I watched, I watched him give back to people, buy groceries for people in stores. I've watched him pick up bills, tabs left and right. The guy was never got credit where credit is due. Professionally, I miss his talent on the field. I did, yes, I know that some people think I'm crazy. Some people don't like the antics. Oh, let me let me forgive him. Let me throw him under the bus so much for 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 kicking a, a kicking net or pissing in the end zone. Oh my goodness, what are we gonna do about this guy? Mm-hmm. Yes, he should never have done that stupid interview. No, he should never have thrown the goat Eli under the bus. But with all of those things said. You damn right I miss that talent around here. He's a number one receiver. Yes, his numbers are down. He's great. The guy is great. And you can't tell me whether you're a Giant fan, a Jet fan, a Cleveland Brown fan, or a, 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 a Canadian Alouette fan, when he is playing and the ball is thrown his way, you stop and watch. Oh, yeah. I mean, the guy is a talent, no doubt about it. I mean, he's one. Of, he, he's probably top five, top ten in the NFL at his position, no doubt about it. You know what I mean? But the, but for for and for you, you you've been to his house, you've done it all with the guy. But there had to have been like some sort of after him signing the deal, and then for the Giants ownership to just ba- basically trade him away after one year, just like you know, hey, what the hell? What gives? Right? I mean. Come on, man. Football-wise, uh, was Odell being wasted here? Yeah. Number one talent. We're not going anywhere. Are we re- rebuilding or not? Uh, get rid of them then. They did. I wish they got more, but they got, you know, they got what they got. Mm-hmm. Okay? So let me ask you, uh, turn this around. Go ahead. And it's already done, right? Mm-hmm. It's already done. It's a done deal. What are you doing about Barkley now? Are you going to sit here and rebuild for three, four years and waste Barkley's tenure? No. Or is Barkley and Jones the centerpiece, and next year is going to be the time you put all the pieces in play, and then the next two years 
the Giants become, you know, relevant. I don't have those answers, man. I don't get paid the big bucks for that. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. I don't get – listen, I do this I do this on my own. This is this is just me. I don't get paid for this show either. You know, this is on my, my own time, the hobby. But I just I – love, I love doing it. You know what I mean? But I get you where you're I, coming you from. The same. You and I are the same. I do mine for a hobby. Right. I, get, I wish I got paid to go on the get to go to on the road. You you know how much you could just take a guess. Not that I would pay anyway, but just take a gander at what I'm spending on just the front row seat at an away game. Forget about the plane, the car, and the hotel and the food. It's a lot of money. And then to sit, and to sit through this crap the past X amount of years. Are you kidding me? Right. Right. It it's crazy. It, it's just crazy. You know, how much how much money the tickets go for and everything like that now and with the PSLs, it's like it, to be a to be a loyal fan, it's so tough. It's so tough in, in that in that Big sense. Time. You know? But to Big get time. to get back to this week, okay, with Otis getting roasted. How hyped are you to be a part of that scene? How hyped are you to be a part of that scene, to be up there with some of not only your childhood uh, idols, but to be there and to just basically say, wow, I'm actually a part of this? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I was extremely happy that I was asked to be a part. Uh, I really am. And I don't take uh, those things for granted. They could have asked anybody else i'm very 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 happy that they asked me um i'm kind of nervous to be honest with you you could see i don't have a really a problem talking <laughs> yeah you but, don't but i but i am nervous um you know i don't i don't know otis extremely i know him well but i don't know him that well um but i, ca- I can't believe i'm going to get up there with you know lawrence taylor to my right and otis anderson to my left like are you kidding me right that's going to be crazy. Great. That's going to be absolutely. crazy. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to be crazy indeed, man. You know, uh, no doubt. Joe, real quick, man. How do the people follow you on social media? So you could follow me on any social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, at License Plate Guy. At license plate guy, just straight up license plate guy on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. Yes, sir. That's awesome. Just all of it. Yeah, you know, because because it's, it's so it's such a flashy name, you know. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I follow you on Instagram, and you you post some some really cool, interesting content, man. Every time that you you go out, you follow the team, and you know what you do, especially helping out the future of America with with the kids you know, up in the Bronx, it's just, it, it's great. It's a great thing to, for you to give back and to do that. So I really appreciate that, man. You know, Hey, listen, I'll definitely see you next week at, at the event. I'm going to buy my ticket and I'll, I'll be in and I can't wait to see, to see you and the gang roast Otis Anderson. I wish Otis Anderson were on the show right now, you know, to finish up and ask him how we could follow him on social media and ask him a couple of questions, but that's okay. Probably save it for, you'll probably save it all for next week when uh, when you roast them. No doubt. Hey, thank you very much for having us on, man. No, hey, Joe, listen, thank you. Thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate you and Otis sacrificing some of your time to come and talk sports with us. I really do appreciate that. Hey, maybe one day we'll have both of you in studio. Yeah, I would love it, man. Thank you so much. No problem, man. Thank you. That is the, th- Thank you. That was the one and only Joe Ruback, a.k.a. License Plate Guy, and Otis Anderson from the New York Giants. And he's going to get roasted next week at Gotham Comedy Club at 7 o'clock p.m. It's going to be a truly awesome time. And, you know, it's what more can you want? A guy that won a Super Bowl MVP is going to get roasted by not only his teammates, but by some comedians and by... By a very famous fan who is actually a very, very nice guy to talk to as well in Joe Ruback. So we thank Joe and we thank Otis for coming on for a little bit and talking football and talking about the roast of Otis Anderson. On that note, for everybody here at Gotham Podcast Studios, I am your host, Will Trucci, logging out. We will talk to you guys soon. Peace out.
Auch nicht. She's gonna be coming in hot. Okay, that's gonna get that's gonna get girls, right? Yeah, I don't see any other characters no. that get in this one. I don't I don't think so. Yeah, so she's a face right away. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's still good. She's got a great next couple of seasons that she do it yeah. do this so well. She keeps the her character kinda interesting. And then again like I do like the one thing I thought was really cool too is like Chloe Black and Ashley she's a cop and I forget her real Thanks for everything, man. Yeah, we wound up losing OJ. We wound up losing all these cool cool. Yeah. That's alright. Listen, they they're killing them now. Yeah, but at least 